one of the most iconic maps to be found in Halo. Originated back in CE as Beaver Creek, brought back in Halo 2 as Battle Creek, and then recreated in Halo Reach as Battle Canyon. It's one of the most important maps you're gonna need to understand to do well in Halo Reach hardcore settings for the MCC. In this series, the Cartographer series, I'll be going over all the weapon spawns, callouts, and also jump spots as well for you to understand the map better for you to do well in the MCC. As you can see on screen, timestamps will be provided in the description down below for you to skip to exactly the part you want to see in this video. So if you like these informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. So let's get right into the content here. Okay guys, so we jumped here on the map Battle Canyon here, so I'm going to give you some of the callouts that you're going to need to know on this map. Now this is a rather symmetrical map, so you'll hear everything referred to as a color then an object, or there's an hours then an object. So for example, over here we have red needles, as in this is where the needle rifle spawns. This whole area pretty much we refer to as red needles. This is red snipe ramp, red snipe cave, or just red snipe, red cave over here. This is top arch, mid arch, lower arch over here. Now over here we got back red, red teleporter over here, as you can obviously tell right here. Uh, this is referred to as red dark because this is the darker side of the map right here. Obviously top of the base would be top of red, bottom red would be like inside the red base or something like that. These are red rocks. This is front red. This is down here. It's called red magnum because down here, there normally there would be a magnum spawning down here, but that's not there in this variation. And here you can see that uh, this is where like the river, you, you call it river, people will know what you're talking about. The rockets do spawn right here as well. So this would be like bottom rockets or bottom mid, something like that. And that's pretty much the uh, general callouts of this map. As like I said, it's mirrored on this map as well. So then you got like blue magnum, that's blue dark, blue needles over there, top blue, blue snipe, blue cave down that way. And so you can kind of see where the symmetrical callouts are happening here. So once you learn one side, you get the whole map down. Now there are two different kinds of power weapons that spawn on this map. Bottom mid will have the rocket launcher that will drop as soon as the match starts. And then each snipe has, as you can probably assume, a sniper rifle up there as well. The rocket launcher starts at the beginning of the match and then spawns in again. 12, 10, 9, 10, things like that. So keep an eye on, the, and then 6, 10 right after that. So keep an eye on that location for the rocket launcher. Same thing with these snipes as well. They have a static spawn time of a minute right after the rocket launcher. So keep that in mind at the 10 as well. So if the rockets spawn up at 12, 10, you gotta make sure you check at these snipes at 11, 10. And they're gonna be symmetrical over on the other side of the map. So okay, now we know where the power weapons are spawning. What about the general weapons as well? So we have a DMR that spawns here, it's every 10 seconds. Move to the back of the map. You see a plasma pistol right here. You move on over to here, we call it red, it's over to uh, red needles, which is, again, this map is symmetrical. And so then you'll see the needle rifle does spawn right here. We will go down into the base, which not a whole lot of uh, action happens in the base, a lot more is for the spawn location. This is where you'll find a DMR right there. And if you continue on over here, you'll see two frag grenades spawn in the back of this base over here. And if you move over to the cave, you'll have two plasma nades that spawn right over here. Same thing, like I said, over on the other side of the map as well, as all the weapon spawn locations are symmetrical. So that's pretty much all these weapon spawns. We check out the spawn locations as well. Uh, these are where the primary spawns of when you first start out are gonna be on this side of the map. And on the opposite side of the map, you can see over there for the blue team. So that's a little bit of a difference right there. I say in this map, actually red base does have quite the advantage because you can have access from the red snipe right to the top of the arch, which is a super important power position. So a little bit of disadvantage for the blue team over there. You can kind of check, we we'll see if there's no one spawning over here. Maybe check over here as well. Uh, these are these two spots right here are very prominent spawn locations. Uh, you do get some spawns in the base as well. Those also do pop up, but the two primary spots are going to be over in their needles and their dark are the two main locations you need to keep an eye out for. And as you can see, there are no spawn points in the middle of the map. The closest you get are like right over there and also just right over on the side of the map as well to kind of mirror that spawn location as well. So keep an eye on that guys. Make sure you know where the enemy is going to be. 
check that side or that side are the two main locations you need to keep an eye out for, especially when you're playing King of the Hill, which we'll get right into now. Okay guys, now we jumped over to Forge here to see, show you a little bit of how King of the Hill works on this map as is the other hardcore variation of this map here. So let's go up into our little ball of glory right here. The, spawn, the hill always spawns bottom mid right here. And as you can see, the weapon spawns are this exact same. You guys keep an eye on those rockets right there. Keep an eye on the snipes up here. All, everything else is exactly the same as it is in Slayer. So the hill will always spawn bottom mid first. And once the timer runs out, it will run over to here in Red Needles. And then it goes back over into the middle. And then it will transfer over to uh, Blue Needles over on this side of the map as well. And then go back into the middle. So you can try to predict what's happening next. But the main thing is always remember the first hill always goes to Red Needles, back to middle, then Blue Needles, back to middle. That's how the spawns work for the hills. It's super important to be able to find a way to set up and get ready for the next hill rotation before capturing the last bit of points on a hill. Let the other team get that, get set up on the next location, and uh, just get ready for to play some defense while they try to scrap hill time when you're already set up to dominate. Okay guys, now in this section we're going to go over various jump spots and nade spots to take into consideration when playing on the Battle Canyon. Now this map is rather straightforward, so not really a whole lot of different kind of jumps like there were in Zealot in the previous episode. But we're going to go over at least a few things right here. First, we just kind of start with like the back of the map right here. Obviously, you can't really use this area much for any kind of jumping surface. I mean, you can kind of jump on the back of this right here and maybe get a little height angle or advantage on somebody. It's a little bit unpredictable kind of thing to kind of utilize that tree right there for your advantage. Um, also on this right side along here over in red dark, you can actually utilize this rock and just jump right into this little window right here. Uh, if, say, say if you know of anyone who's in red base, you can kind of get a few shots on them. Uh, maybe if they kind of throw some people off, and I wouldn't expect anybody to be in this corner, uh, but that's about all you can really do with the spot right here. You can't really jump up to the top with it or anything like that. Obviously, you have the little jump ups right here. You utilize to get on top of the red base. A good thing to take in consideration, say you have the hill or you have players spawning over in red needles, what you can do is actually utilize this rock right here for a nice line of sight to kind of get you guys, catch guys either coming through the teleporter or just in the hill in general or anything like that. You can also use this rock to either kind of jump to here jump over it you can actually use this rock to also kind of jump over to the top of red base to kind of just keep you guys in mind there you can actually also use this rock to jump over a little shortcut over to red snipe if you kind of just jump up like this crouch jump and there you go now obviously with this being the most height advantage on the map there's definitely a power position to be on top arch where you can actually utilize this jump right here to get on top of the blue base I um, you know, it might be kind of straightforward, but you know, just so you guys can know that you can go from here to here just fine. You can also jump on top of these if you oh so dare. Obviously, you're top mid, you're kind of exposed, and uh, you kind of find yourself in a sticky situation for sure. Oh, I got another jump over here for you guys over on this side on the blue snipe side here. Uh, obviously, you can kind of like go around this corner right here and kind of hang out right here, which I'm sure most of you do recognize. Uh, you actually can also jump on top of this little ledge right here, crouch up in this little ledge right here, and if you wanted to, get a little extra height advantage on somebody, maybe jump across like that to get yourself into cover like that. As so, um, you know, a lot of, I don't really see people a lot of utilizing that. That's actually a severe height advantage uh, for you as well. It's something to take in consideration as well. But you can actually go from blue snipe over into red base. Now, it's a little bit of a tricky jump, but let's see if we can actually pull it off on the first try here. Just kind of run across, jump over, crash jump into this corner, and boom, there you are into red base. Also, kind of similar over to what we saw on this rock over on this side of the map, on the red side and the blue side. We don't have that much of an advantage on the rock, but you can jump on this one right here. Get a little high to jump over. You kind of get a little sneak peek of what's going on over there. Or kind of preview before jumping over to this big rock, which is a heavy committed move. Where you, once you jump here, you're like, I'm only going to get maybe one or two shots, or maybe pick somebody off. That's definitely another move you can make right there. Also, utilizing this rock right here, I know it might be a little straightforward and obvious, but you can utilize it to kind of cut the corner and jump on top of the arch just to kind of help you get a little bit more of a height advantage. Now, remember how I showed you that red dark jump? You cannot use it on this one. The window is just a little bit too small, so that jump is only five on the right side and if you need to use it for some reason uh, you actually can jump on top of the 
Uh, back door entrances right here. You kind of have to angle yourself properly. You kind of aim for the top right corner of it, but you can jump on top of this right here just fine. You can also do the same thing on this side over here. And as you can see right there, we got on top of the arch just fine right there. It's a little trickier than this one right here. Uh, you actually can also make that jump on this side as well. Coming from, like I say you're coming from out of the teleporter, you can make a jump on top of this right here. As you can see right here, we're able to jump on top of the arch right here. So it actually would be pretty good if you went through the teleporter and you know there's some guys in over in blue dark. You can probably jump around the corner like that, get a nice little height advantage, jump on them to surprise them and pick them off just fine right there as well. Another thing to take into consideration are some nade spots when it comes to the different hill locations. Obviously, we have a hill location here, a hill location in the middle, and hill location over in the red needles as well. You also, just keep in mind, guys, you can utilize these walls right over here to bounce nades off. Toss a nade right across the corner right here, have it hit the wall right over there, bounce down, land on some people who are camping out, defending the hill location. Obviously, you can utilize that as well. But that's about it for jump spots and nade spots. Like, not a whole lot. Pretty straightforward map. Nothing too crazy, but uh, certain things to keep in mind while playing on Battle Canyon. So that is everything you need to know when it comes to playing Battle Canyon in Halo Reach. If you guys like these kind of videos, informational kind, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Let me know you want me to continue on with the Cartographer series. Mentioning that, I have recently uploaded the past video, which was Zealot. If you want to check out that, link will be in the description and linked in the video title screen here as well, guys. So if you like these videos, make sure to tap subscribe to keep yourselves up to date. Leave a comment down below what map you would like to see me review next, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.